Most of us, when we are suffering, we want relief right away. Not most of us, all of us. You get into suffering, you want to an answer right now. Get me out of this now. Don't waste no time, God. I can't take it another minute. God said, we'll see about that. He don't take you out of it right away. What is your purpose, God? I'm bringing you to the threshold of pain. And when you think you can't go no more, I'll force more on you because when I'm no longer here, can you take the pain? Can you be patient in your suffering? Can you seek assistance through patience and prayer? Surely, he says, Allah is with the patient. Now, I caught an awful lot of hell just developing as a young Muslim. Spike Lee came to visit um, us this week to talk to us about the upcoming movie, Malcolm X. He wanted to ask questions about the murder of Malcolm. He wanted to know about my involvement in the nation at the time of Malcolm's assassination. <laughs> he wanted to know, was I envious of Malcolm X? Did I want his place or position? He wanted to know who firebombed Malcolm's home, who really killed Malcolm. Why do I bring this up? In growing up in the nation, to get where I am by God's grace today, I suffered plenty. You don't know what it's like to work as hard as you can work for a man that you love while people are speaking evil about you and casting aspersions against your motives. If you're a good person and your thinking is right, and yet people see you as sinister and evil and will spread that kind of talk about you, making it super difficult for you to work. That's pain. Malcolm X was one of the most dedicated workers that I know of to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I never saw any minister, none, work as hard as Malcolm X worked for the good of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam. I never saw any. If there were any, I didn't know of them. Malcolm X was Elijah Muhammad's star pupil. He was touted in the newspaper as being Elijah Muhammad's heir apparent. Do you know what heir apparent means? That Malcolm was alleged to be the one that would wear the mantle of Elijah Muhammad when Elijah Muhammad was no longer among us. Tyson wants to be champ again. In order to be champ again, to wear the mantle that he once wore, he must suffer. Because through his own weakness, arrogance, vanity, lack of consideration of his opponent, he lost his title. 
to an inferior man who was highly motivated and took his championship away. You can't get cocky over nothing that you have done because there's always somebody better coming up that you don't know nothing about. God has never made an eternal rose. He made a rose bush to outlast the rose. And whenever you get fascinated by the beauty of one rose, look underneath it and see one buddy. None of us can be here forever, no matter how great we are in whatever we do. Our talents wane as we get older. There will always be somebody to step in because God don't rely on no one man to do nothing. That one man will do what he's to do and another man will come and finish the job or keep the job going. God is eternal, but man is finite. So we can't worship no finite person. You listening? Yes, sir. Brothers, sisters, if Malcolm was going to step into the seat of Elijah Muhammad, Malcolm would have to be brought along the same path that Master Farad Muhammad brought Elijah Muhammad. You got to try the man. You got to put stuff on the man. You have to say good words about the man and then focus the envy of the brothers of that man on that man. Go to any gymnasium when a fighter is preparing for a championship. He hires people as a sparring partner or sparring partners and their job is to beat him into shape. That's a crude way of putting it. But the sparring partner is working, looking for a weakness in him because he wants to prove himself too. So he bangs. And if an opening comes, what? If he knocks the champ down, that's his day. You know what I mean? He goes back and says, I, I knocked the champ down. I think I'm going to be the next champ. I used to watch the way those who sparred with Ali in the gymnasium, they were trying to hurt Ali. Ali never tried to hurt his sparring partners. Only when they got out of line, he would teach them. I'm just telling you what I know. When he saw that they were literally trying to hurt him, Ali would then open up. Bop, 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 and he would really put it to him, and they wouldn't want no more of that. Then Ali would back off. He was a very merciful man. In truth, he was a wonderful champion, brother. Wonderful champion. But what is Muhammad's mosque? It's the gymnasium. For those who are ready to undergo hard trials to be worthy to establish truth. Who's your sparring partner, your captain, your lieutenant, your brother in the ranks with you, the minister, all these people that you think don't like you, putting stuff on you, that's your sparring partner, man. Don't run out of the gym and say you want to be a champ. You want to be a champ? Stay in the gym and keep on working till you get strong enough because the brothers on the inside, the sisters on the inside who put things on you is nothing compared to what the enemy is going to put on you on the outside. Huh? Does that make sense? It does? Now follow me along. Malcolm had to be able 
to take envy, jealousy, hatred, and not become vindictive in order to be a savior and a deliverer of our people. Sure, Malcolm was an effective teacher, no question about it. <clears throat> but that's not all. Don't you know, if you can't take abuse and not return evil for evil, you can't sit in this seat. Not this seat. Not the one that I occupy. You can sit in your seat. On your seat. But you won't sit in this one. This is a mercy seat. Because you don't need justice right now because if justice came to you, would nobody in here be alive? You don't need no justice. You need a mercy seat. That's why we sing the song, Come ye disconsolate. Where, ere you are gathered, come to the mercy seat. Fervently kneel. 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 Bow down, hard-hearted nigga. Bow down to the mercy seat and mercy will come to you. Hold on. Sit down. Sit down. You're not bowing to a man, jackass. You're bowing to a living principle working in a man that God has chosen for your damnable life. You are unfit to serve him. You are unworthy except by mercy, by grace, he draws us to him. And that's why we sing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound to save a wretch like you. No, to save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I don't see by my power, I see because of God's grace. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Do you really? <laughs> Jesus put it another way. Except you become as a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Do you know what that's telling you? When you begin to think you know now, oh, I know, oh, yes, I know the way. I don't need anybody to tell me anything. Fine. Then watch how quickly you sink in the quicksand of your vanity. Because we all need somebody. And the somebody we need is Allah, but Allah manifests himself through people. We don't believe in no mystery God. Hmm? In order for Malcolm to sit in the seat of a man who was commissioned to save us. And Master Farad Muhammad said to Elijah Muhammad, take plenty. Don't be a man that can only take a little hurt from your people. Learn to take whatever your people can give to get to them with the truth. Man, that's easy to say. That's hard to do. Because our people are so cantankerous, brother. Sometimes I feel like Moses, you know. I want to take a bunch of my friends up on a mountain somewhere. Ask them, would you like to hear the voice of God? 
and blow these niggas up. Excuse me for using that language. But Moses did that, you know. <laughs> and Jesus was a little better. After they put the poor brother in such a predicament, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And you know, he's right. Most of us who do this evil to good men, we really don't understand the consequences of our own actions. I'm going to close. But the subject of Malcolm X is so fascinating because Malcolm's life to me is the most exemplary life to be studied. Because like us, he grew up and dropped out of school and like many of our brothers and sisters, we drop out of school for one reason or another. Malcolm was a dropout. Malcolm found his way into criminal activity like many of you, many of our people. Malcolm became a criminal. But he didn't want to be that like we are all involved, many of us in crime. We don't want to be involved in that. We're looking for a higher purpose. If Malcolm were not looking for a higher purpose, he never would have become a Muslim. He was looking for a way out of the life that he was living. Sometimes God will take you to jail to quiet you down, slow you down, to give you a chance to think. And while Malcolm was in prison, his brother came to him and told him of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the rest is history. Malcolm, brilliant, gifted, but the thing that Malcolm had to develop to be the heir apparent of his teacher, he had to develop the mind of a savior and not the mind of a destroyer. Did Malcolm develop that mind? To a degree, he did. Malcolm was the kind of man that as long as he were around, you would have somebody to always point out your fault. And I always felt that as long as Malcolm was around, I might see the hereafter, because he was always a brother who would tell you where you were wrong, and point out the right way to you as best as he knew it. I liked him for that. No, that's not the right word. I didn't like him for that. I loved him for that. I loved him so much that I would have been willing at any time before his defection to give my life for Malcolm X. If you look at any of the old movies when you see a young Louis X sitting behind Malcolm, you will hear me cheering him as I cheered the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And if you watched me, you'd see me scanning the rooftops when he spoke in the public, looking for anybody that might have some weapon that I might run in front to take the bullet so that my brother, whose life I felt was much more important than mine, would live. God knows best. But Malcolm did not understand what Elijah Muhammad was doing for him through what Elijah Muhammad was doing to him. He began to think, as I believe Spike too believes, that Elijah Muhammad was actually envious of Malcolm's brilliance. Let me stop right here. Don't you know that envy is that most hated characteristic in any human being? And whenever you find envy in a human being, you find the possibility of a devil developing. Because when you envy somebody, 
you actually hate them for what they have. And envy is not passive. Envy is active. You actively work to oppose the person that you envy. It's a hell of a sickness and disease of the heart. If Elijah Muhammad had that disease, he couldn't be a man of God. We can, we can dismiss him right away. Finish with him. He's no man of God. Because no true servant of God would ever be envious of his student who is excelling in his own teaching. Now look, I am a student of Elijah Muhammad. And I have now become a teacher. And I have many young students under me that I'm desirous of teaching them so that one day when I am no longer physically among you that the nation will not suffer and lose one step because these young people will step in and carry on the work. If I hear that one of these young men are excelling all women in the teachings, I rejoice because that means some burden is being taken off of my shoulder. When Elijah Muhammad saw all of the good coming to Malcolm, he rejoiced, but then inside of him, he wondered, can Malcolm handle praise? Will the praise that he's getting from the people turn him? Any teacher would worry about a student who is becoming strong and powerful. You're not envious, you are cautious and you are observant of that student because once you start making a student powerful, the next thing you gotta ask is, where will he take the people when you are no longer there? got to know before I leave what kind of man you are. I'm not going to leave here and leave a crooked heart, a devious minded serpent, or a vain egotistical madman or woman to stand up over a people that I love. Hell no. How will I know what's in you? You've got to be tried. That's all there is to it. That's what you came for. And if you can't stand being tried, get the hell up out of here now. Don't bother with me no more because I'm going to try you. And I don't know how to try you better than God. But in my own silly way, I got to know what's around me. Don't you think I should? Yes, sir. I don't want no surprises. <laughs> Give me some credit for having some degree of intelligence. Smiling faces, sometimes they don't tell truth. I don't give a damn how much you smile at me. That don't cut nothing with me. Not today. Hypocrites smile. True believers smile. What's the difference between the smile of a hypocrite and the smile of a true believer?